Hi, Katie of the Trade Show Boot Camp family. Since coming to Paper Camp Plus last summer, I have done a lot. I loved Paper Camp Plus. I took copious notes and brought what I learned home and spent really the whole year implementing what I learned. I have gotten so much more efficient. I have a, an operations manual for the first time in my business. We remodeled our upstairs to make it as efficient as possible for my team. And shortly after paper camp, I hired a manager for the first time for a big role. And unfortunately, after six months, she was expecting a baby and had to move away for her husband's job. And that was, that was a big hurdle. And I lost another long-term employee who I was able to invest in and she set off to pursue her own business full-time, which it's what I've always wanted was to be able to invest in my employees and equip them with what they learned here to go and follow their own passion. And unfortunately last month, we lost our wholesale manager to cancer after a really long battle. My team is grieving. Everyone who knew her loved her and we're all hurt. So in the span of six months, I've lost three major employees and, and right now just feels like such an important time to make a plan and to set forth what the next chapter of my business is gonna look like. I kept telling myself I'm not gonna go this year. I, I, don't, I don't have the money, I don't have the time. And then I sat down and read the topics that are gonna be tackled at business camp and I was like, oh, that is so what I need. We have shifted quite a bit and moved towards a lot of direct-to-consumer, focusing on our website and on our subscription service card club and our brick and mortar and really building community with the YouTube channel and with our social to build community around snail mail. At this point in my career, I, for the first time, I feel like I have real clarity about what I bring to the table and the kind of community I want to build and the kind of products I want to make. And all of that is built around marketing and sales and how to take my vision and implement it to make my fans and my followers into shoppers. I can see the beginning of that happening, but I really, honestly, I need, I need the business camp experience to help kickstart me through this next season. Grief has been really hard and losing employees has been really hard. And I just, I feel like I need that fuel for the fire that being around other business people brings. I need help and direction to get to where I want to go. Wanted to throw my hat in the ring because I know how much this experience would mean to me and to my team. And this is a time that my family has been through a lot and has hit us with a lot more financial burdens this year than we expected. This is my shot to go to business camp. Thanks for considering me. Thanks for watching this. Sending much love from Seattle. arrived here in LA and my room overlooks the golf course so if you hear exuberant cheers or yelling it's all happy golf related noise which I've never had to say before but there you go so I am here in LA for the workshop or whatever I've been calling it a million things I think the best Description is it's a mastermind retreat where it's a small group of people who all do very similar things for work that are coming together to talk about their businesses, to brainstorm ideas, to grow their businesses, and to build community with people who do what you do. I have all the feelings. I spent the flight here half writing letters and half writing my goals for the retreat, my questions, my thoughts, my plans, 
just whatever seemed important. And I'm ready, I'm ready to get started. Tonight we are doing a happy hour and starting to talk about some of our goals and then tomorrow morning we start really early sitting down with each person and digging into what are the, the questions they have about their business, what are they working on, and resources they wanna share with the group. And I just wanted to sit down now before I start before I see anybody, before I talk about anything, before I cry or do any of the things that are coming soon, I'm sure, and just record this to capture the like excitement and anticipation and expectance, expectancy and a little bit of awkward energy. I've had a lot of these moments in my career where I set time aside to think about my business and to think about what I love to do and what I want to do moving forward and they have always been times that I look back on and see that it was a crossroads and see that it was the catalyst for a lot of things moving forward so that's why I'm doing this I'm documenting this process I'm going to try to take every opportunity to talk about what I'm thinking about what I'm learning and share those things with you because There are a lot of us who run small businesses, who do what we love, who have our dream job, but do it in isolation because I have to hire my coworkers and pay them and have enough work to keep them on staff, which I've been really lucky to be able to do. But I'm, I'm almost 10 years in to this, this business, this career that I've built. And there've been a lot of days where I didn't have anybody to talk to or anybody who is talking about these things that I'm going through. So this is that time, this is me, I'm talking about it and I'm not going to share well, what I would consider intimate details about my business, although I share a lot more than I think a lot of people do, but I will share what I'm learning about myself, what I'm learning about my business as a whole and some of the things I'm excited about moving forward. I also will have a roommate in this room, so I'm gonna to try to be as not awkward as possible, which is why I took this opportunity to record this before she gets here, because I already know her, but I still don't wanna freak her out. And that's it, that's what I got. I'm excited to be here. It is still summer here. It's gotten cold and rainy in Seattle very quickly. <laughs> It was rainy all weekend in Vancouver, and then we came back on the train and brought the rain with us, and now it's fall in Seattle, so I'm kind of feeling like I, I don't know, I got like a wish from a genie, or like I bought some magic beans that made it summer for a few more days. And this summer has been really, really special and monumental, and I can already see this summer being a catalyst. I mean, from the beginning of summer to now, I have 12,000 words of a book written. That's more than I've accomplished so far in my lifelong goal of writing a book. So I'm excited. I'm excited to dig in. I already know several of the people who are going to be at the retreat and I'm their kindred spirits and dear friends. And I'm like, fine. I'm tearing up thinking about getting to see them and talk to them and spend the next couple of days with them. So I'm really excited and I'm bringing you along and I gotta get some of this energy out, so I'm gonna go jump on the bed. Okay, bye. <laughs> Don't tell my roommate I did this. Or my son. Just don't tell anyone. That's between you and me, okay? Shh, shh. just did the intro, introducing ourselves and getting to know everybody. And the prompt was to tell the group about the influential people in your life and like your support system. And I felt, I should not be surprised, but surprisingly emotional talking about my team and my family and um, 
talking about the people who have been with us and aren't with us anymore. So I'm feeling a little raw, but we're gonna go eat dinner and I need a glass of wine <laughs> and I'm excited to get started tomorrow and get into the nitty gritty. And that has been your update. It is sunny here. getting ready to get started. I've got coffee. I, I'm i nervous. I don't get that much time to focus and think just about the business and my role and my career. And so when I do, I feel like there's a lot of emotions and it's, it's kind of stressful. It's easier to ignore it, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to dig in and think and grow and talk and cry probably. So, okay, that's been the morning update. Cheers. Okay, I just finished my hot seat a few minutes ago and had a little lunch and I'm just taking a minute to sit outside and look at the ocean, which is a nice perk. And um, yeah, I'm, my mind is pudding. Okay, so the main things we talked about are all the different aspects of my business, and there are many, and whether they are growing or declining, and whether they are making money or not, and how much time expenditure it takes for them to make money and where my excitement level is with them and I think the highlights are the things that are going well in all aspects and don't take buckets of time are um, selling products on my website and designing new cards to sell directly to customers on my website and in the store. And Card Club is a big highlight that is going well. It's growing. It doesn't take a ton of time, but it is really enjoyable and people like it and it makes money. And, and wholesale is something that takes a ton of time and takes a ton of money to print catalogs and to do outreach and is really it has been declining I am selling way less things to other stores than I used to because some of it is because I haven't been able to do to exhibit at a trade show recently and I have struggled with the cash flow to get new catalogs printed and and I've really struggled with the time to keep doing the consistent outreach that it takes to keep bringing in customers and I also think I've seen a lot of other storefront brick and mortar shops really struggle these last few years and I'm in a few Facebook groups for shopkeepers and like it's hard out there a lot of shops are closing and it's really really hard and so those relationships have to be really solid the fit for the shop has to be really good and the connection has to really be there to keep that consistently coming in and it feels so much easier for me to connect one-on-one -on -one with someone who's going to buy one of my cards or a product and and enjoy it or give it to someone that they love like that connection is very easy for me and I've struggled more with knowing how to connect with other shop owners since I don't know their story and it's I don't get FaceTime with them I have some ideas of ways to connect better but I think the main idea is that like that's not where I need to be spending most of my time, money, and energy. Because if it's not the best fit for my work, then it makes sense to keep pursuing connections with the people who really enjoy it and are purchasing it. And that makes a lot of sense. I think I'm struggling because it was so, honestly, since 2013 when I launched Wholesale, that has been the goal 
That has been how I pictured success to look. And I've had, I've had success. It has gone well. But when I launched my card line, I didn't launch my card line and pursue retail and then add wholesale. I launched my card line to pursue re retail or to pursue wholesale and retail was a benefit. And now, especially with Stan Mouse Superstar, it makes so much sense to me to be myself and to share what I love and to get excited about snail mail and about sending cards and writing letters and talking about mental health and grief and struggle and joy and to talk about those things and to share them and to share them directly one-on-one -on -one human connection that makes so much sense to me and pursuing that feels so good but it means I have to sort of close the door a little bit on wholesale. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop wholesaling. And I hope that I will continue to work with other retailers. And I hope that I will continue to grow connections there. But I only have so much time. And I only have so many people on my staff I can delegate to. And that was another big part of what we talked about. Is how am I, how am I maximizing the time that my employees have and the time that I have. And I have not... I mean, we just hired two new people, so still training. I'm still getting them on board, and really, our our org chart has changed a lot in the last like two weeks, and I've been gone for most of it. So um, there's a lot of opportunity to delegate to get people totally up to speed. But I've been really afraid to trust people and to delegate things to them, and I'm afraid they're going to leave. And I can't keep making decisions for my business out of fear. Because that means, like, what gets deleted out of my life when I make those decisions that way is the white space. The, like, space to be creative, the space to write, the space to take a walk. <laughs> and that, that white space in my life is so valuable. And when I, when I sit down and, like, figure out like write down my goals and what I want for my life that I don't have like it's the white space and it's not going to show up and usually the white space comes in when my body is so exhausted it just gives up or my mind is so overwhelmed that I have to, I'm forced to take a break and I don't want white space to be something that is a consequence I want it to be something that I fight for and that means I need to get the right people in the right roles doing the right things and get them up to speed so that I can pursue like it's a helicopter because if I can delegate the stuff that keeps me in the weeds then I will have space to breathe and I'll also have space to reach out to publications and guest on more podcasts and do speaking engagements and plan events and actually do the things that make me feel excited and connected and actually get my work out there so that people know I exist. Because I think the more I do with Snail Mail Superstar and the more I get out in the world and speaking about the things that I love, like people get excited with me. And, and it is something that I love it's part of my personality that I'm I'm starting to really appreciate is that like I can I can share my excitement and bring people along for the ride and it's what I want and if I am so bogged down in the day-to-day -day, I don't get that excitement because I am burning the candle at both ends and I want there to be candle left <laughs> at the end of my life I want to have built enough white space in that I look back and I see all of the moments of joy and I see all of the unscheduled, unpredictable things that happened in my life. I want to be able to write letters and be outside and it's crazy to me that my dream and my dream job, um, can fill up so much space in my mind and in my life that literally taking a walk feels like a huge luxury and 
you know, I've been out of town so much in the last month and I have had a lot of really beautiful moments of joy and excitement. And basically I hadn't done any of that this year until now. And I feel like a different person because I went outside in the sunshine <laughs> and got time away to think about not my business and to read a book. <laughs> like, I know this has gotten very long, but I have a lot of actionable items and a lot of like clear direction on where I want to run. And that's going to mean some things get left behind and I'm going to have to be okay with that. Because it's really not, none of the things that I'm closing the door on are things that I was really excited about or really am enjoying. They're just things that I believed at a time were the right thing that I was supposed to be doing. It's harder to let go of those like things that feel wrapped in guilt, the things that are like, I should be doing this, or this is what success will look like. And I get to define success. I'm really grateful I get to watch the ocean right now. My brain is put, it's definitely putting, but I feel better after having talked this out. Thank you for being my sounding board. And I'm excited to like keep writing and keep drafting my ideas and figuring out where I head next because it is a crossroads and I do not have to do everything to be successful. I get to pick. And I'm excited to say yes to things that bring me joy and to say like, thank you. Thank you for the time you've served me, but goodbye to things that don't. You know how they say, ain't no party like a stationary industry party because a stationary industry party don't stop? <laughs> I am in rough shape today. <laughs> we had a really nice time last night and it was my intention, oh dang, oh, spiders. It was my intention to go back to the hotel and sit by myself and reflect and make plans and lists and things. But <laughs> I, I just, had a lot of fun and got to hang out and talk to people who do exactly what I do for a living and that I realized was way more important in that moment than making lists about what to do next because I do feel like I have a lot of clarity today and not from the drinking <laughs> but just I'm really excited I'm I'm really excited. I have clarity on one more person that I need to hire and even an idea of who that could be, which is kind of wonderful. I know what I want to run towards and it's all the things that are giving me life and not draining my life. So I just feel excited and it's a lot. There will be a lot to do and a lot to change, but really not that many things. I think it's more just being incredibly specific and intentional about what I do and what I don't do and where I use my time and cutting out the things that I'm not enjoying that aren't fun that aren't, aren't making me money and doing the things that I do enjoy that are fun and that are making me money and gosh like have more fun sounds great <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be
And wasn't the drink in the like box full of smoke crazy? Like, I'm going to go eat some lunch and nurse this hangover and I'm excited. I'm flying home tonight and I've got Fisherman's Fall Festival first thing tomorrow so it's gonna be a long rest of the weekend. Um, but good stuff and I don't know. The future is bright. That's a nice way to feel.